Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, an online vintage tube store. And today, in tube lab number 57, we're going to take a look at the 6 or 12 SN7 kit preamp. It's finally finished. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult the professional technician when in doubt. And I'm happy to announce my largest sale of the year is underway. It seems like every year Black Friday starts earlier and earlier. The sale runs till midnight, Sunday, October the 28th. Now, that seems like a long way away, but there's a lot of pressure on vintage quality vintage tubes. So if there's something you want, grab it early. The code is Black Friday 15, which gets you 15% off the entire store. And if you watch till the end, I'll share some extra special deals on quality vintage EL34s. Okay, last week I talked about harmonics and how it could improve the sound signature. And that's a perfect lead into today's lab because the 6 or 12 SN7 preamp is finally finished. Let's take a look at the specifications and the pre-production prototype. Let's start with the prototype. Now this has been reworked a number of times and, and so it's going to have some extra bolt holes. There's four here, four here that aren't going to be in the actual um, production version. The main features of this um, of this kit preamp are the dual mono design. Now you might say, Jim, you've only got one power transformer. How is that going to be a dual mono? Well, this has uh, a twin secondary winding for the high voltage. And after that, we go into a completely separate, uh, two separate mono uh, preamps. Basically, you've got two mono preamps inside one package. And what that gets you is um, is a great stereo, great stereo separation, which gives you a great stereo image and a lovely sound stage. In my opinion, it's the only way to go. Uh, there's variations on how you can get there, but this is this is my favorite way. So you're going to have uh, two large filter caps, two filter chokes. Let's just flip it over quickly. We're not going to spend a lot of time with the build because we've been we've looked at this a long time ago. Now this new version will play uh, will safely play the first 6SN7, the GT version. The Sylvania Bad Boy was a GT. And then one of the problems I found is that the the early 6SN7s, they really don't like the slightly hotter biasing of modern amps which are designed to play the GTB, or they can play the GTA, which is basically the same tube, but with just a little different filament specification. So I wanted to take um, take the original version, which could play any 6SN7 or 12SN7, but not the GT safely, and turn it into a universal 6 or 12SN7, and that's what this is. And uh, these are first generation boards, so here you've got two boards, for one for each channel on the power supply, and two preamp boards. And my son Charles redesigned the boards. So these are the boards that will actually come with the kits. And they're really quite interesting. They're well labeled, well laid out, big heavy traces. They're really, these are the thickest boards I can order with the thickest traces. They're really good quality. And uh, have a look at this. This is really neat. Because I want the leads to all come out the middle here on the on the chokes and on the uh, large filter caps we're looking up on top, um, it's important that the board be a mirror. So we could either design two separate boards, or Charles came up with this neat thing. So look at this is this is side A, and if we flip this, this is upside down. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> That's side B on this channel, which is the left channel. And if we flip it over for the right channel, look at that, there's side A. 
So they're mirrors. They're mirrors, and um, you can get away with that with the preamp because you know the um, the components don't mind flipping over and being installed on the other side of the board. These double-sided boards are great for that, but they, you can't do that with a preamp board because the tubes themselves aren't symmetrical. So when you flip it, the whole circuit has to change. Anyways, and don't ask me how I know that. We, <laughs> we spent hours working on, on a mirror design. Have a look at this though. Charles came up with the idea of putting the logo for the uh, kid amp business on the boards. Isn't that neat? That's a ST or shoulder type or a Coke bottle tube. Can you see it? There it is with lightning bolts. I love lightning bolts. So the, the new company that's going to build the, the kit preamps is MTK or Melotone Kits. Isn't that neat? Now for now, uh, the kits will be sold uh, inside Valves and More store. Eventually, if the kit business grows, we'll probably have to make a, a website of, of its own. But anyways, for now, it'll be in Valves and More. Now, the, oh, and let's look at the other board here. Here's the preamp board. Aren't they lovely? Well labeled, well laid out. Uh, Charles spent about a week designing these things. I consulted, of course, but he did most of the design work. They're double-sided, so some components, little resistors go on the back side. This is the side that faces the plate like this. That's your orientation. But getting the traces all laid out so that they don't interfere with each other. What happens on these boards is you've got high voltage, the B+. Plus. You've got the heater coming in here, which is DC, which is great. That's low noise. And you've got a low voltage audio signal coming in here to be amplified. And you've got to keep the, the signal away from the heaters. You've got to keep it away from the, the, um, from the, the B+, plus, the high voltage. And that makes for a very low noise circuit. And you'll see, I'll show you the specifications. You'll be, I was really surprised at how low noise this preamp is. So the, those boards will come with the kit. Now, if you're interested in, in being a test builder, let me know. Uh, the first kits are going to only go out to test builders. And to qualify, you just need to know how to use a volt ohm meter and how to solder. And uh, you don't have to be an expert at either, but you do have to have some skills. Now, the kits are going to come, they won't come with an instruction manual. They are going to, I'm going to build the kits with each and every one of you. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a, a series of build videos, and you can just follow along. There, you know, you're going to get a package of information, the schematics, and some basic information with each kit. But essentially, um, there's going to be a build video for each and every kit. Neat, huh? Okay, let's just put that away. And let's take a quick look at the specs. Now let's just zoom in here so you can see. Everything's going to be in the information section of the store and available below for downloads. And because everything is under a commons license, an open source license that I chose for YouTube, you can uh, you can download the schematic and if you don't want to buy the full kit or the light kit from me or any parts, it doesn't matter, you're free to go ahead for non-commercial use, you can download the schematic and build your own version and watch the build video if you want. Okay, so Keep your eye on the revision number, though. Every kit amp has a revision number. In fact, all of my prototypes, I use revision numbers to keep track of them. We're at 2.3, and that's going to be the version that comes out in the first uh, the first kits. And I'm working, I'm working hard. I'm working seven days a week to get the kits out. They're not ready yet. Uh, I just finished the uh, the plinths, uh, or almost finished the plinths. Uh, one of the problems is that we're basically putting out three kits all at the same time, one after the other. So it's quite a bit of work to get them all, um, all the parts arranged, all in order, all our ducks lined up, <laughs> all of our kits lined up, whatever you want to say. So the plinths are almost done. This weekend, I should have enough for the test builders for all three. And this coming week, I'm going to work on the top plates, which is a big job. While I'm doing that, Charles is working on getting a CNC machine. 
and um, we're in the it's it's ordered we're in the planning stages um, and but the first uh, kits are going to go out with manually manufactured top plates they're going to be perfect or very close to perfect and uh, they're going to look great but the main production run will all be done on a CNC machine which increases our overhead costs substantially but decreases our labor so it's a trade-off anyways um, eventually I'll announce on TubeLab that the kits are ready for uh, any test builders that that are interested. So, one of the big trade-offs in getting the preamp to uh, play the GTs safely was was in gain. So when I um, when I designed the, this version, I used the original Sylvania data sheet for the 6SN7 GT, the bad boy, and I set the operating point using that. And that gave us a little lower gain than is normal for the 6SN7, 5.74. It's plenty for driving the URI mono block. It's more than we need, actually. And it'll drive most power amps. But if you have a power amp that is a difficult amp to drive, you're going to want the E80CC kit preamp. It's, it's an amazing, clean, clear-sounding um, amp. And it's got a phenomenal amount of gain. When my son Charles did the the testing on it, he said, he "said Dad, wow, this thing is crazy. It's got an amazing amount of gain. It's more gain than you'd ever need, but it sounds great. So why mess with it, right?" Here we've got the uh, total harmonic distortion or THD. Now we wanted as much specification as we could give you without making it so you know so jumbled that you couldn't figure out what was what. So we took three points in which we measured the THD. 40 hertz, sort of the beginning of the bass. 1 kilohertz, that's the top of the mid-range or the bottom of the treble. And 10, 10 kilohertz, that's sort of the very top of the music range. So if we take the THD, at the, including the second harmonic, at 1 kilohertz, we're 0.163%, which is still a pretty good number or minus 55.8 dB. But if we consider the second harmonic to be beneficial, and we do, if we take the THD below the second harmonic, we're at 0.011% or minus 79.4 dB, which is a fabulous number. Frequency response 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is is not plus or minus, it's minus 0.36 dB, which is virtually dead flat. And at 11.5 hertz, we're at minus 1 dB, that's our 1 dB down point, which again is, which is great. And at 20 kilohertz, we're only uh, 0, minus 0 0.25 dB, which again is really an awesome spec. Let's keep rolling. Here is the full frequency graph. Let's just back out a bit so you can see it. Down here at uh, 20 hertz, this is the bottom of the base. And way up here, we're at 20 kilohertz. And here at 0 dB, this is where we move. You have to shift your, your, your plot so that you can make some sense out of it. Here's the signal. And this is not a nominal line. This is the actual signal. And it's dead flat. And down here, this is your second harmonic at minus 55.8 dB. And that's really low. That's that's not a very loud um, that's not a very loud portion of the signal. But it's just enough to very subtly change uh, the sound signature and to fill in the mid-range and make the music sound a little bit richer. Down here we've got the noise floor. So our noise floor is at minus 79.4 dB, and there's a little blip here at 120 hertz, and that is your main. If it was, sorry, the mains is over here at 60 hertz. This is your rectified mains. Uh, when you rectify your in North America, we have 60 hertz. If you, if you have 50 hertz, it would be 100. The It doubles. So it would be, in my case, it's 60 to 120. And 
in an earlier version of this preamp, we actually got the noise floor way down here, down around minus 90 dB. Um, but the problem with filtering it that heavily is the second harmonic disappears as well. So what we wanted to do is to find the compromise point in which the third harmonic is down. We don't like the third harmonic. We don't want to hear it. And the noise floor is low enough that it's virtually, you can't hear it. At maximum volume, uh, in my system, I, I have to put my ear close to the tweeter to actually hear the noise floor. That's how quiet this preamp is. Okay, let's keep rolling. So there will be a power, an up-to-date power supply schematic, high resolution, available for below the video and in the information section. And the same... Oh! This is out of sequence. Let me grab the other... And same for the actual uh, preamp schematic. And feel free to download it and use it for a non-commercial use. Okay. This I wanted to actually look at earlier, but it got mixed up in the shuffle. This is the frequency response. 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Let's look at the easy part of the graph. All the way across here, it's dead flat. If you zoom this in, there's a very tiny little drop off uh, somewhere around, I think, 17 kilohertz, but it's very slight. You would never know it was there. Most music is, 90% of all music is here in the mid-range, from here to about here. Let me get that so you can see the, there you go, there's your frequency that, down there. So from somewhere around 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz, that's where most of your music, this is your mid-range right in here. Now, it looks like we're rolled off hard on the, on the low end, on the bass, doesn't it? But what we did, so you could see this, is we've increased the resolution dramatically. So the minus 1 dB down point's way over here, around, I think, 11 hertz. And what I like to do as a designer is to find the minus 0 0.5 dB down point, because most humans can't hear a change in volume that's less than a decibel. That's why we use the minus 1 dB, and many people actually use the minus 3 dB, which is way the heck down here. But for a good spec amp, you can use the minus 1 dB point. I like to look at the 0 0.5 dB down point, and that would be right about here, which is somewhere around 17 hertz, which is really a great place. So the bass response is fabulous. Okay, now, if you've stayed to this point, you know I like to talk about the great tubes that came in this week. So hang on a second, I'm going to clear the decks. And let's start with these. Now, these are in the wrong sleeve, and they're rebranded boxes. <laughs> boxes are really quite pretty. Look at these Westinghouse boxes. Look at that. I mean, these, these are, I don't know, 60, 70 year olds. 60-year-old boxes, probably. I didn't check the date codes on the tube. My bad. Um, but let's get in here and see what's inside these boxes. I'll have a look at that. That's, an, that's a Philips E80CC. And it's rebranded twice. Siemens has got their brand name on it. Siemens is a great company, of course. It is a great company. And Westinghouse has got their brand name on it as well. So how do we know that it's really a Philips gold pin? Well... The gold pins give it away. As far as I know, there were no other E80CCs that had gold pins, but you can see the factory codes are there. I don't know if they show up on the camera or not. There they are. So there's the upright triangle. That tells us it's here in Holland. That's the main Phillips plant in Holland. And there's a date, a date code and a tube type code in that. I'm not going to... We don't have enough time to do every code. <laughs> Anyways... A couple of sleeves of these came in, and they're going to sound absolutely wonderful in the E80CC kit preamp. So I was really happy to find them. I shouldn't say I found them. Charles found them. He's been really good at finding great tubes. What else came in? Oh, some lovely Svetlanas came in. If you follow me, you know I love Svetlana tubes. They made great quality tubes. Good sounding, great sounding tubes. Uh, unfortunately, they only made a handful of what we would call common audio tubes. And this is the driver tube for the URI monoblock. And 
It's not a common audio tube. It's actually a radar tube. But it's based on the 6J5, which was at one time a very common audio tube. And this is a low noise version, basically, of the 6J5 for radar use. It's got a, it's got a plate and a grid in on the top with very short leads that gets you low noise. And it's got the beautiful flying C or winged C logo. And it's got a nice date code on it. This is the, in Cyrillic, it's the 6C8C, and in English, that's 6S8S. So 1971, and it's got, I don't know if you can see it, two sticks. So that's two, so that's February 1971. Have a look at the plate structure. It's just a beautifully made tube, and they sound amazing. This is one of my favorite CV6 types. Uh, in fact, I haven't met one I don't like. But the wonderful thing about these is that they're very robust, they're well made, they're newer. A lot of my um, vintage uh, CV6s date back to the Second World War or shortly afterwards, so they're getting really old. Um, and, and best of all, these are affordable. Okay, uh, what else? Oh yeah, okay, uh, discount EL34s. Hang on, it's going to take me a minute to get them all over here. And we'll have to back up to get everything on camera. Now, these are the Teslas. And these are the Mullards. The only thing about these tubes, now they're, they're half price in the store. And the only thing with these tubes is they're testing a little bit lower than a premium tube um, should for the kind of money I, I asked for them. So I put them in the store at half price. Um, to get half price, you've got to, you're going to have to use the Black Friday code, which will work on these tubes. The, uh, let's just take a quick look at them. The, the Teslas have, this one has an original label. Take a look at that. Made in Czechoslovakia. So made in the former Czechoslovakia. They've got, these are the early version. They have they have a brown base that gets discolored with heat, just like the Svetlana EL34. Uh, people love this tube for the base. They, they do everything really well, but the base from these tubes is superb. It's one of the best in the EL34. And I'm not talking about big base, thump a thump a base. I'm just talking about quality, um, detailed, good tone. Um, and the, um, let's take a quick look at the Mullards. In fact, this one's actually branded Phillips Miniwatt. Phillips owned Mullard, of course. So, uh, these are all XF2, um, so from the 1960s and early 70s. And they're the double O, or double top getters. And they're rarer than the single O getters, so they're worth a little bit more money, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, as a result, the wholesale price is quite a bit higher for the double O getters. Now, because I wasn't 100% sure with these tubes, I put, I put a lot of hours on them. The Mullards were in the amp, uh, in my amp all week. And I've been really getting into David Darling's uh, album, Dark Wood. It is, um, uh, for... for for people who don't know, David Darling was uh, an American composer and cellist. And he did a lot of very innovative um, music. And um, his first albums were on ECM. So, well, say no more. If he's on ECM uh, in the early days, he almost certainly was a world jazz or innovative jazz player or composer, and he was. Anyways, Darkwood is this moody, acoustic slow melodic piece that features the cello and it's just glorious on tube gear it's one of my it's be, it's now become one of my favorite albums so the mullard sounded absolutely fabulous on it and then later in the week i put the teslas on and they sound great as well so the code for the teslas is under yield 34 is 310d for discount and the mullards is 301d Okay, if you stay till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Ah, that's my old line. My new line is, take the Black Friday code. Now, it might look like I've crossed out the shipping options, but they're still valid. So, I still have flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. 
And if your order is $150 or more after discount, shipping's on me, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Vowels and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.